Guys, there are five things that I wish I knew before I started my urban homestead. It would have saved me so much time, energy, and effort if I had just known these five things. And today, I'm sharing them with you. Well, hey guys, Natalie here, and welcome back to Hates a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here today because today I've got another video that is part of a collaboration with my friends Victoria of Grow Your Groceries, Josh of The City Set, and Kira of Homestead Dreaming. And together, we urban homesteaders are working diligently to make content for you guys to help you guys get started growing food wherever you may be, whether you're in the city, the suburbs, or the country, you absolutely can be growing food wherever you find yourself. And we wanna be able to provide you guys with information that we wish that we had when we got started. And today's video is all about that. I'm sharing with you the five things that I wish I knew before I built my urban homestead. Item number one on the agenda, poop. I wish I had started with poop. And by poop, I mean worm castings, because for me, that is my livestock animal. That is what I use here on the homestead to make everything from using worm castings to brewing aerated worm teas. If you guys haven't seen any of my aerated worm tea videos, you need to go check those out because literally, it changes the life of plants. And I don't understand why more people don't use it. I think people are just like a little confused by worms and, and worm teas, but seriously, like so many bioavailable nutrients that it absolutely dramatically changes the health of my plants and soil. Cannot recommend it enough. So that is what we use here on our urban homestead. And I wish I had gotten started with more worms sooner. Before building anything, before building the garden, before getting any garden beds, like poop, like I needed to start with poop. Now we finally have a really sweet worm bin set up. I make teas all the time, I use castings all the time. Um, but as you guys know, compost takes time. So it's important, in my opinion, to get started with that first. Oh, okay, number two, item number two that I wish I had known before building my urban homestead. I wish I had gotten started growing food in grow bags. I feel like grow bags are really underrated. A lot of people are still just starting to get to know what grow bags are. And I honestly was like, no, like I don't want grow bags. I want my beautiful garden beds. But here's the thing. If I had just been a little bit more open to using grow bags and not being so set on having my garden beds and like growing in beautiful garden beds that I love, I could have started growing food sooner. I could have started growing food for my family while I was building the garden beds. The garden beds took me about two months to build. And if you wanna see that whole process, I'll link it up above. We've got garden bed plans for you, which you can download. Um, these are really simple garden beds to build, and yet they took me a really long time. I had just said, I'm gonna get some grow bags, I'm gonna get some great soil, because that is a benefit of using grow bags, is you can use really high quality soil and you can control it so much better that way. You know, you're not so worried about other diseases within your garden beds. Like grow bags in general are a much easier way to grow because everything is contained in that bag. You can move it if you need to move it. I think it, like personally, I found that disease is much more easily controlled in grow bags. So I really recommend grow bags. If I had started with them, I could have been growing food way sooner than how long it took me to grow these beds and then plant the beds. So I can't recommend it enough. I would have started with grow bags. So if and when we move to our new property, you know that I will be starting our food in grow bags and I would recommend it to anybody else who's just starting off as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, number three is such an important one, pollinators. So a lot of us people who are interested in growing food, we think of just the food plants. However, pollinator plants are just as important because not only do they add beauty to your garden, but they're going to invite the pollinators to do the work of pollinating for you. Unless you wanna be out in your garden every day, hand pollinating, you know, doing squash sex, tapping on your tomatoes, like unless you're really into that and you wanna be out there doing that every day, get some pollinator friendly native to your area flowers. And by doing that, you're gonna invite things like hummingbirds and bees and butterflies. And by doing that, you're building an ecosystem and that ecosystem is also going to support what you're doing with food and slowly but surely you're gonna have this beautiful cycle out in your garden. So take it from me, don't just focus on food production plants, but also focus on beautiful flowers that are going to invite pollinators into your garden and essentially do the work for you. All right, let's talk a little bit about watering. Now, a lot of people based on where you live have different watering setups. Out here in zone 10 in Southern California, we are technically a chaparral climate. We are technically 
very desert-like out here, and so that means that most days are hot and dry. We have like 300 days of sunshine here in San Diego, and that means that my number one priority when it comes to growing food is tending to our soil. Now, I could do a whole other video on soil care, soil health, and I think we should do that, and I would love to do that for you guys another time, but this, the short and sweet of it is this, is that when we're growing food and growing any plant for that matter, we are stewarding the soil. It's really about soil. If you don't have good soil, you don't got much. So it's really important to care for that soil. So how do we care for that soil? Well, part one is making sure that it has adequate moisture. To do this, I first installed a drip line. And a drip line is great. Um, there are benefits to that for sure. However, I found that using soaker hoses is more effective in water disbursement and keeping like an even watering situation going on my garden. I also come back through and I make sure to hand water on the really hot, dry days. I do it at night because I learned from a friend that, how does she say it? I learned from my friend Sarah over at Simple Sanctuary that it's better to water in the evenings. And the saying goes something like this, water in the morning if you need to survive, water in the evening if you want to thrive. And so in the evenings now, my new thing is coming around and making sure that the soil is evenly moist because when we lock in that moisture, we're locking in the soil biome, the ecosystem that's growing underneath the soil. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but roots and fungi communicate. And the better that communication network is, um, the better your plants are going to be. That's where that beautiful mycorrhizae forms and where that plant health is really established. It starts with the roots and with soil and the better you can keep it evenly moist, not too moist and not too dry, just evenly moist, the better your plants are gonna be. So I really wish that I had started with soaker hoses. I have found those to be a much better solution for my situation out here in San Diego in zone 10B and I recommend them to, um, I recommend them to friends when they ask me, you know, how should I water my garden? Now on the note of soaker hoses, there are many kinds of soaker hoses. I have very low grade, very cheap soaker hoses, and that's simply because we've had to do everything on a budget. You know, I still kind of consider us newlyweds, even though we've been married three years. Like our budget has been very tight for a long time. We're very minimalistic, we're very frugal. Like we really only spend where we have to spend to make things work. And so I wanted to be able to do this garden on as best of a budget as possible. And for me, using the cheaper end, the lower grade ones is not that big of an issue for right now, especially when, you know, it's just low production for my family and I, and a lot of this is still like a learning game for me. So anyway, there are many kinds of soaker hoses. There's really low grade. That's what I have for now. It's fine. We'll upgrade later on. And then there's really high grade, like PPA free, um, like thicker hoses. I have the quarter inch, like low grade ones right now, but there's thicker hoses from like Gardener Supply that I would really love to upgrade to one day. And so when the time is right, we will upgrade. But for now, this gets the job done and I really enjoy soaker hoses opposed to drip line just because for me, it offers a more even watering situation. Number five and part two to the whole soil conversation is mulch. Oh my goodness, mulch. Now, a lot of you probably already know that mulch is super important. However, this is my note on mulch. Mulch is really important for your garden. If you don't already know that, mulch is what's going to help keep your garden beds or your garden evenly moist. It's going to help lock in that moisture and keep temperatures cool in the summer and then it's going to help regulate the temperature in the winter as well, keeping those roots more warm than they would be without the mulch on them. Mulch is so, so, so important and depending on where you live, there will be different mulches available to you. Now, here's what I recommend experiment with different mulches. I wish that I had gotten like four or five different mulches and experimented with them. It literally has taken experimenting with, I think this is my sixth mulch that I've tried since moving out here. I finally found one that I like. Finally, my neighbors brought over some composted mulch that they got from a local place. I think it's called El Corazon uh, Composting Facility. Um, Anyway, so far I'm really liking it and it's been a really great mulch for me in this particular climate and area. It allows enough water to get through without suffocating the plants and it's been a really great mulch for me so far. So, so I would definitely recommend experiment with mulch. It's really important for soil health all the way around. It's gonna keep your soil evenly moist. It's gonna regulate that temperature. It's gonna protect the soil biome. It's gonna protect all of the little bacteria, and mycorrhizae and fungi that are communicating in there. So mulch is really important. Make sure that you find one that you like and experiment with different kinds of mulch to see what does best in your climate and your area. 
And I suppose we'll throw in a bonus one, which is keep a good attitude. There have been times where this has been a really challenging endeavor to build an urban homestead, but it's been an amazing endeavor and being able to keep a positive attitude about it has helped me, I think, get a lot farther than I would have if I had gotten discouraged or frustrated or annoyed. And ways that I do that is by, you know, asking for a hug when I need one on the tough days, when I have plants that have disease or where it was just a really long day of building things, um, asking for help when I need it and making sure that I get enough water and rest. Those are super important things too, to staying healthy and staying positive. So my sixth and bonus tip for you guys is stay positive, keep, keep focusing on your health, don't overdo it, get help when you need it, ask a friend for a hug, ask your spouse for a hug when you need one, and uh, keep getting after this whole urban homesteading thing because you can absolutely grow food wherever you may be. And I hope this video has been encouraging to you. If you liked it, definitely give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below. What are your thoughts? What would you do differently? Do these tips make sense to you or would you recommend other things? This is a community where we can all learn from each other. So if you have a recommendation, definitely leave it in the comments down below. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. And of course, if you're not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button because I'd love to invite you to join the Good Life fam. So thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I will catch you guys in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to check out my friend's videos. I'll link them somewhere around here. Uh, we've got a really cool playlist set up for you guys, so be sure to check that out as well. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.